I want to talk to you a little bit about DCharms. So how many of y'all have heard about DCharms, know what DCharms is? Really quite a few. That's very good. Um, I ask that every time that I do one of these because it varies uh, a lot from audience to audience on who's heard about DCharms and who has not. Um, so it's good. That's uh, some good strategic communication happening here. So very much appreciate that. Go ahead to the next slide. This is what we're going to talk about. Uh, I think I'm going to tell you maybe a little bit about DCharms that you haven't heard yet, and, uh, and that'll be okay. Uh, and while I've got Q&A at the end of this, any time at all that you've got a question that you want an answer to, uh, don't hesitate to ask, because that's, that's why I'm here today, is to make sure that I'm getting you the answers that you need on this really big project. Okay? Next slide. So what is DCharms? Well, the very first thing that it is, it's Oracle Software as a Service in the cloud. We're going to be moving to the cloud. That's a big deal. Uh, we are the first federal agency that is partnering with Oracle to do this. I had an opportunity over the summer, um, July time frame, my boss, Mr. Bill Booth. How many people know Mr. Bill Booth, former Air Force? Um, Mr. Mike Sorrento, also former Air Force, so you've got Air Force, former Air Force folks leading this effort. So for, I hope that you take some comfort in that. Um, but it's a great team. So we went to Cupertino, California, and we had an opportunity to meet with uh, the Oracle CEO, uh, Ms. Safra Katz, because they are partnered with us and they are committed to making sure that we are successful. We're the enti entire Department of Defense, 900,000 plus civilians. Uh, I think we're going to be their biggest customer when we go live. So we were going to meet with Ms. Safra Katz, who is the Oracle CEO, and she was going to spend 45 minutes with us. She spent two hours with us, and they were ready for us. So we had done prototype testing in June and July of last year, and we had identified areas where we needed help with, with, uh, with the product, right? So as we did prototype testing, we found several things. There are things that we needed to standardize. There are things where we needed to make changes, but there were things that absolutely where the product needed to change. So we went there. We had identified, I want to say, eight or nine critical gaps that Oracle needed to to address in order for us to move forward. So she's there to meet us and to let us know that they're listening to the things that we're, we're asking for. I'll tell you one of our critical gaps. One of our critical gaps was business rules. Everybody knows business rules? So you could literally put anything into the product. You could, you could uh, do a step increase from a step one to a step 10. You could put anything in the system. We need business rules. So, uh, so they um, have modified their offering because, again, this is software as a service. We do not own this. We will not operate it. We're buying a service. They have modified their offering to include a business rules editor that will allow any of their customers to update business rules in the system, not hard-coded, but adjust business rules configuration when things change, like when the NDAA comes out and we've got different things that need to happen. The system will now allow that because we went and we met with Oracle and they understood that we had a need and they are committed to making us successful. So for the, for the ladies in the audience, Ms. Safra Katz, in 2018, <clears throat> she was a number four highest paid CEO in the world. She spent two hours with us. I did the math. I know how to divide by 2080. She spent over $100,000 of her time with us to make sure that we understood that she's committed to our success. And we meet with them on a regular basis, not with Safra. Everybody calls her Safra. It's like, whoa, Miss Katz. <laughs> um, but we meet with her engineers. We meet with her application engineers on a regular basis because at the end of the day, 
when we deploy, we're going to deploy when it's ready, and we're going to deploy when we can be successful. So that's the first thing that you need to know. It's an Oracle product, it's software as a service, it's in the cloud, and we are partnering with Oracle. The second thing you need to know, when we go live, we're working with our partners at OPM so that it is integrated with USA Jobs, the USA Staffing, with onboarding, and with the EOPF. So when we go live on day one, we will have that integration. Uh, Diana Saxman, how many of y'all know Diana Saxman? Just a few, she's great. So when I was here in, in 2008 to 2012, when we were implementing USA Staffing, I worked with her, so it's always good to remember your connections. So when I got in this new job, that's a, one of the first calls that I made. I said, need your help, we're doing this D-Charms thing, we've got to go, we've got to be integrated with USA Staffing when we go live. She's been working with the team regularly ever since. So um, remember that in the future, connections are important. Uh, robust data analytics that you can run directly off of the system, off of the production system. So today, we don't like that because we've got a server, it only has so much capacity, we can't have everybody running reports off of it. DCharms, you can do that. You will have a robust data analytics tool where you can run uh, reports directly off of it. And then the last thing, uh, and I was not aware <laughs> when I got into the seat that um, DP map is part of DCPDS. How many of y'all know that? Would have been good to know that when I walked into the seat. Um, so <laughs> we're running with this DCharms thing, and then all of a sudden somebody tells me, did you know that DP map is part of DCPDS? And I go, wait, what? Because <laughs> when we sunset DCPDS, we're going to be sunsetting DP map. We've had three working groups already on performance um, so that when we go live with DCharms, we will be standing up a new performance tool. And we've gotten the experts from all of the services and the components to work with us. We are not looking at changing policy. We are looking at standardizing processes and procedures in goal setting, plans, and appraisals. So when, you, when we go live with DCharms, that's what it is. Next slide. So why? So why are we doing this? The end of the day, we want to get to integrated and, and HR processes, right? There's so much that we do today that is looking in one screen and moving data, keying it in over here. What we're trying to do with DCharms is get to integrated, integrated end to end processes. Core HR is going to be the foundation for that. So when we go live, we will have core HR, we'll have the analytics tool, and we'll have performance. But there's more that we have that we can build on DCharms. And we own these modules talent management, case management, competency management. So while we will go live with the three things that we've talked about so far, there is an ability to build on it so that we can get to integrated end, end processes. And that really is the core, um, the benefit of DCharms, where a person record is in the core HR, but it reaches out to all of the other modules and it's all tied. So when you do reports or when you do anything, you've got access to the entire record. Um, standardized HR um, processes. There's a, a, a lot of work that we're doing in this area. I mentioned business rules earlier. Business rules, um, and, and again, let me ask you a question. How many of y'all know that DCPDS is actually today for the Department of Defense sitting in six different servers? So we've got a server for, yep, got a server for Air Force, we've got a server for Army, we've got a server for Navy, and for the Fourth Estate. Um, so six different servers. Uh, and those instances have been allowed to modify over time. So we don't really have standard processes across um, the department for the most part. Uh, we started looking at business rules. That was one of the first things that we started looking at because we knew we had to have them. 
And uh, what we found is that there's over 9,000 business rules in DCPDS when you look at all of those six different servers, 9,000 of them. So we started working, uh, working groups on business rules specifically, and so far we've eliminated over 5,800 of them. For sure, we know that we're going to take 2,000 of them into DCharms. But what we were able to find is we had duplicates across the six servers. Some of them were different, so we've standardized those across, uh, across the services and components. Um, standard processes are, are really kind of key, and I'm going to give you a, a couple of examples on why. So uh, the first example, so we had some time to hire workshops. I know we've had some great people involved in those. Um, what we found out was we had some consistency on the beginning end of it. What we counted was the, you know, the day open. We had some consistency on the end of it, but we had no consistency in the middle, right? So we were doing apples to oranges comparisons across the services and the components. Do you want to know what the only metric, the only metric that we provide the Secretary of Defense on a regular basis? time to hire. That is the only metric that he sees on civilian personnel. Time to hire. And we give it to him on a regular and recurring basis. And we identify it by service, and we identify it over time. So what was it last quarter? What was it the quarter before? And where do we want to go with this? What are the initiatives that we're, we're implementing across the department to try and drive time to hire down? That is the only metric that goes to the Secretary of Defense. And he is focused on it. So we need to make sure that when we're doing this, that we've got an apples to apples comparison. Um, that, really is, uh, that really is key. So um, as we started going through and identifying what all of the gates were and what the triggers were for identifying the time to hire measures. What, did you, what do you think was the number one issue, pain point, uh, impacting time to hire? Y'all know this. Clearances, thank you, thank you. Um, yes, that is correct, security clearances. And you know um, what is so gratifying being in this position that I am today, uh, I have the ability to actually make connections with the people that are doing that. As you are all are aware, we recently moved security clearances from OPM to the Department of Defense. Ms. Tricia Stokes is running the uh, directorate, the De uh, Defense Vetting Directorate, uh, that looks at security clearances. Uh, in conjunction with OPM, they've been able to drive the backlog down from about 700,000 to about 250,000, so still a lot of security clearances that need to be uh, adjudicated, but way better. She's a hard charger, and she's also a great partner. Um, and so I, I met with her and I said, you know, we really have an opportunity to partner together. We get a lot of information on civilians uh, when they come on board that you need and you want, right, in the whole onboarding process. Uh, we don't share that necessarily today. Uh, we could. She's ready, to, she's ready to take that information. I go, but you know what we need? We need transparency. Where is this security uh, adjudication in the process? Where is it in the process? We need that transparency. And so uh, we're partnering together to, to look at how we can do that. How can we share the information that we have today with the security clearance background adjudicators, and how can we see what we need to see in order to be able to do our jobs, and not just us, but the candidates as well, right? Because they're the ones that are calling and asking, where, why, when am I gonna get hired, right? When is this gonna be a firm job offer? And that's, that, if anything, is what is so um, gratifying in being in the position that I am today. The problems that we faced when I was here before there's, there's people that I can work with, that we can work with, um, to try and resolve some of the issues that we have. Uh, they do the same thing that we do. So when we go through an a, a RIE or a business process reengineering event, 
We go into way detail on what we're doing in civilian hiring and then put a little box over here that says security clearance process. Interestingly enough, they do the same thing. They go into great, de great, great detail on the security clearance process and then they put a little box over here that says civilian hiring. So we're at the process right now where we can actually tie those processes together to try and get to integrated end to end HR processes. That's what this is all about. How do we, as a department, tie the strings together to get you the information that you need to make a firm job offer? So that's one. That's why standardizing processes is really key. Because once we standardize them and we actually get them embedded in technology, uh, that, that's going to make a difference. But let me tell you another example. Again, time to hire workshop. Um, there was a report that was required um, by Congress. It was due the uh, 30th of September 2019, but I didn't find out about it until maybe the end of August, beginning of September. So in that report, it required, actually said, every business operation is going to take a 25% reduction. It was directed to the chief management office at OSD, and uh, what Congress said is, if you can't take that 25% reduction, then you need to come back and tell us why. Why not? Why can't you take the 25% reduction? So I'm going to brag on the Navy for a little bit. They did a great um, timeline that showed over the past 10 years when every major event happened in civilian personnel, whether it was BRAC or whether it was NSPS coming in or NSPS going out or when we did USA staffing, on a timeline they laid out every single thing. And then they also laid out time to hire over time. And then the last thing that they did was they identified the number of HR professionals that were in the Navy at any given time. It was a fantastic pro product. You could see in one glance, one thing, that when you decrease the number of HR professionals, time to hire went up. So we needed to pull that data across the department. And we did. Greg uh, from the Navy was there. He was actually in the time to hire work group that was, was um, meeting in our building. And I said, go get that guy, so we could figure out what he did so that we could do the same thing across the department. And what did it show? It showed that when you decrease the number of HR professionals across the department, and we did, we decreased the HR professionals, I want to say it was in the 2012-2013 time frame, by 15%, 15, not 25, by 15%, time to hire went up an average of 30 days. So when we started, it was about 65 days on average to fill a job. And not immediately, but as soon as we started bringing down HR professionals, um, time to hire started to increase. And you could see it just kept going up. Uh, at the end, before the knee curve coming back down, when we started hiring uh, HR professionals back in, uh, it was a high of over 100 days per fill on average, 100 days. So on average, an increase of 30 days for a period of about three to four years. So if you think about that and what missions were impacted, hundreds of thousands of jobs that we fill during that time frame, at least 100,000 jobs every year we fill. If on average those jobs were filled 30 days longer on average, that's a lot of mission that didn't happen in the Department of Defense. That's what standardizing HR processes will allow us to do. It will allow us to tell our story. You can't cut us by 25%. If you cut us by 15%, there is an impact on the mission. There is an impact on the mission. So we told that story, and we shared it with the chief management office, and we can tell that story. So that's important. Transparency of HR actions. Uh, today, if you put an action in, whether you're an employee or whether you're a supervisor, in DCharms, you will be able to see where that action is. 
So you will be able to track actions in system. That's a big deal. Being on a customer of the HR process, that's a really big deal. Being able to see where actions are. Because I always want to know. I got a critical fill. Where is it? You can see in DCharms. Uh, business continuity. We are buying a service. Today we own and operate DCPDS. It is limited in the ability to expand. And buying a service, we will have the ability to, it will have the ability to, to expand to meet the need. So that's critical as well. And finally, HR transformation. While it won't be transformative on day one, uh, it is the foundation for being able to add additional modules, talent management, case management um, in the future, which will allow us to have those integrated end-to-end -end processes. While, while I said it is going, not going to be transformative on day one, it will be a change. It will be a big change from what you see today in DCPDS. So how many of you were here in the HR community when we went from the legacy DCPDS to the modern DCPDS? Quite a few, wow. Okay. So was that painful? And you know what it was? It was a blank screen with green letters, right? That's what it was, right? You, RJCA, right? Name, social, PTI 101, anybody? <laughs> yeah. It was painful because we, know, we knew how to do it. We were literally coding the mainframe, folks. That's what we were doing, but we knew how to do it. That's going to be the same thing. Right? People that came after that didn't know this PTI 101, it was better. Modern DCPDS was better because they didn't have to figure out how to code and get all of those error messages. Uh, you remember. Um, it's going to be different. And training is going to be absolutely key uh, in the change management process. So uh, while it will, um, I just, I'll leave it at that. It will transform HR, it will, but it is going to be a huge change day one. Next slide. And so these are the capabilities um, from an HR professional um, standpoint. Today you have to log in as yourself, log out, log in as a manager if you're a manager, log out, log in as an uh, HR professional. Uh, in DCharms you have one login and all roles. You don't have to log in and log out. You will see my record, my team, and your HR uh, uh, tab in order to do work. So um, we're in the 21st century. You only have to log in once. Um, so that's a big change. You're going to have transparency over the actions. You're going to see what your, where your work is and where work is coming to you. That's key. Um, it's got a, like a, almost a Facebook. It's almost like global, right? Um, so you'll have the ability to navigate and look at where employees are um, and, and um, I guess we'll see, but you know, you could put pictures in there. It, there's a, it's kind of like a Facebook capability. But you can look in and see where folks are, what their phone numbers are, what their email are, a, a, global, capa a global address capability. For managers, they can view their own team. They can also submit actions on themselves. They can submit actions on their employees. And then again, they can track those actions through the system. So that's key. For employees, they can submit actions on themselves. Uh, they can track their, their actions through the system. They will have the ability to get a career brief, employment verification. So some of the things that exist today in DCPDS will also be there. Um, those are the key capabilities, along with the better user experience. Um, we're going to have the ability in the uh, release that we just got. So Oracle provides a release every quarter. Um, so we just got it. We're in the process of configuring it now. But it's going to give us the ability to actually configure the screens. 
give us what they call responsive user interface. So today, the system is the system, right? The screens are the screens. There might be a lot of information that you don't need at all on this screen, but you're still going to see it. In the future, with this new release, we're going to have the ability to tailor those screens to exactly what you need to see. So um, we believe that's going to give you a better user experience for you as HR professionals, but also for managers and employees. Next screen. OK, so major lines of effort. Um, we've got a lot of them. We've been doing this for over a year since before I got there. So I've been in the job for about nine months. And before I arrived, um, we were uh, in the process of deploying the prototype. So user configuration has been happening for over a year, where we're making the decisions and, um, on design and how it's, going to, how it's going to be configured. So that's been happening for a while. We had our prototype testing in June and July. So we identified, is this going to be a viable product for the Department of Defense? The answer to that was yes. But there are several things that we have to do in order for it to be a product that we can actually deploy, right? Um, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you about Milmod. How many of you all know what Milmod is and what happened with Milmod? Not so many. Yet more of you know about D-Charms. Interesting. Um, so Milmod, Air Force effort to deploy the modern military personnel system back in 2001. Timing was interesting. Uh, because it was right before 9-11 when we deployed the system. And uh, it, was, uh, it was a painful effort for, for AFPC, but it was a really painful effort for airmen. Uh, we were not able to account for a military who were, we were deploying uh, because it was after 9-11, and we were not able to pay airmen correctly. After a couple of months of Milmod, we had set over 70,000 errors in pay. Um, and it took us quite a while to dig out of that. Um, and it really has been up until recently where we've, you know, we've had the credibility that we had before we deployed Milmod because there was a significant credibility issue uh, when we deployed it. We are not going to do that with D-Charms. Um, I can tell you that categorically that we are not going to do that with D-Charms. Uh, my boss, Mr. Bill Booth, uh, is the director for the Defense Human Resources Activity, uh, was an Air Force officer at the time we deployed Milmod. And he knows what happened when we, when we deployed it. It was an issue. Um, so he wholeheartedly agrees with me uh, that we're not going to deploy D-Charms if it's not ready to deploy. We are targeting July. Uh, but we have identified what the criteria is that we are going to meet, uh, and we will have a go-no-go no, go decision. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a series of governance groups that we, that we work with on a regular basis. So there's a tech board kind of at the GS-1506 level that meets every week. Uh, then there's a group that I'm a part of, which is uh, an advisory group, um, the deputy director for uh, DHRA is in it as well as, as well as uh, Mr. Mike Sorrento, who is the acquisition arm. We meet on a weekly basis. Uh, we meet with the civilian personnel leadership uh, in the department, so the Mr. Mark Ingebaums, uh, Dr. Todd Four, who is now in the Army. Did y'all know that? Okay, he gets around. Um, uh, Ms. Uh, Paige Hinkle-Bowles, also former Air Force, now Navy. Um, so we meet with that group on a bi-weekly basis to talk about D-Charms and where we're at and what we're doing. Uh, but the uh, Undersecretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness, now Mr. Matt Donovan, formerly the Undersecretary of the Air Force, we're everywhere, folks, I'm just telling you, uh, will be making the decision and will be making the recommendation uh, based on our go, no-go criteria, whether to go uh, in July or not. All right, so if you take nothing else from this, this uh, session, what I need you to take from this session is that we are going to go live when we're ready to go live, okay? And these are the people that are helping. So if you could go to the next slide. So these are the folks that are helping us with the uh, business rules working group. I mentioned we originally had 9,000 business rules. 
We've had the ability to eliminate 5,800 of them. We know 2,000 of them are going in. Our fifth or sixth business, world, uh, business rules working group was uh, last week. I haven't got the readout from it yet. I don't know if we're gonna have another one or not, but that team is dedicated to making sure that we've got the right business rules when we go forward with D-Charms. The other thing that you need to know is that when we go live, one of our go, no cri go criteria is making sure that the critical business rules are configured in the system. And those, those critical business rules are any business rules that are associated with payer benefits, okay? Next. These are the folks that are helping us with performance management. We also had our third performance management working group last week. Uh, I believe we may need one more uh, to make sure that we're wrapping up all of the, um, the loose ends, particularly the integration with Core HR. But these are the folks from the Air Force that have been participating in the performance management working group. Next slide. And I guess here's where I give a big thanks and a big shout out to Ruth and Sonia uh, and Angelina for helping me present to you today. They're the ones that put all of this together uh, so that I could come and talk to you about D-Charms. Uh, so thank you, appreciate it. All right, these are the folks that have been involved in making the decisions in the Air Force for uh, configuration. Next slide. We just stood up the reporting working group. Uh, so this is, what are those reports that we need to have day one in the system? They will need to learn OTBI, that's the new name of the new tool, the robust uh, reporting tool in uh, DCharms. And uh, so thank you. This is going to be a roll your sleeves up working group and actually begin to develop those reports. So we've got to make sure they understand it, that they're trained and, uh, and are able to, to pull those reports together. Next slide. These are the folks that have been involved in the testing to make sure that what we are delivering uh, meets the need. Uh, next slide. Let me, let me talk to you about mock migration real quick. So 950,000 records is, or employees, how about we call them employees? 950,000 employees in DCPDS today. We've gotta make sure that when we load all of those employee records into DCharms that, um, that it works that they're, those records are actually going to move into DCharms without any errors. That's key. Um, it's actually one of our go, no, go criteria. Um, uh, we've gotta make sure that 98% um, accuracy rate in, in migration. So we're gonna do some mock migrations. In March, we're going to do 600,000 records from DCPDS into DCharms. And in April, May, we're gonna do the whole thing. We're gonna take every employee record that's in DCPDS today and we're gonna migrate it into DCharms. And we're gonna see what records don't flow into DCharms because of errors. And then we're gonna turn those errors back to you. Back to the Army, back to the Navy, back to the Fourth Estate so that those records can be corrected before we go live with DCharms because we've got to have those employee records migrating over. So that's a big effort and really and truly it's our DMDC team that is leading the effort on this one um, and kudos to them because this is incredibly important. We've got to have the foundation of all of those records migrating over. And then last training, I've already mentioned training is gonna be very, very key to all of this. Um, these are the folks that are involved. We had a, we've got a training working group that right now is meeting weekly um, that uh, got to see some of the materials that were being delivered from our vendor. And we're in the process right now of making sure that when we have our train the trainer training, um, we're ready to go. We're ready to make sure that we've got all of the materials ready for you. So next slide. This is our training schedule. Uh, we may move a, a little bit to the right. I mentioned that with the release that we've got right now, we have the ability to change the screens rather dramatically. Um, there is no point in training or developing training materials 
until we have that configuration in place. Um, so this may move a little bit to the right, but um, right now that is our timeline. Uh, maybe April for train the trainer training, uh, but that's our timeline for making sure that we get all of, uh, all of the operators of this major weapon system trained and ready to do business with D-Charms. Next slide. So how can you help? These are our big three areas. Data cleanup, when we do the mock migration, we've got to make sure we're getting you that information and when you get that information on what records are not migrating over, we need your help in cleaning them up. That only can happen here, right, where, where the rubber hits the road. Uh, change champions, I need your help. If there's anything that you heard out of today's uh, briefing, it should be a couple of things. Training is important because this is gonna be different, right? It is going to be maybe not as dramatic, but it's still gonna be dramatic as going from legacy uh, DCPDS to modern DCPDS. So training is gonna be absolutely key. You have had your voice in shaping the direction that this, uh, this system is going, this application is going. Where DTERMS is going has had the input of Air Force, of Navy, Army, Fourth Estate. We have a literal army of people, Air Force of people, sorry, <laughs> that are, um, sorry, uh, that have been working on this. You need to know that if we're not ready to go in July, we're not going to go. You have leadership that understands that this is a huge effort and that it is critical to the mission of the department that we've got this major weapon system running before we launch. But you also need to know that if that happens, it is not for lack of effort. The teams that are part of this are running to make sure that we do, in fact, deploy as soon as we can. So, and if nothing else that you take away from this session, we will deploy when we're ready to deploy. We are targeting July. We are absolutely targeting July at this point. But if we're not ready to go, we will make the decision that those criteria are not met and we will make a decision that we will delay. So that's what I hope you walk away with today. And I hope that all of you now are change champions for DCharms. <laughs>